What's up, Rock Stars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 6, Episode 2. So this is my second time recording half of this video. When I got off of work, I went to start editing, and I noticed that half of the damn video, the first half of my video was not there. I don't know what happened. So now I'm in the car again, doing it again. And the lighting is going to be different. It's going to get on my nerves. Um, you know, it's not going to match. It's going to be inconsistent. And that is going to upset the Capricorn in me. But oh well, I don't feel like doing the whole video over. I just need to get the part that didn't record. So y'all, anyway, not that you guys cared about any of that. But the nigga show is aggravated about this. And it's thrown my schedule off too. So... That's neither here nor there. The review, at least this first part. Let's get to it, shall we? So, the girls are still at the nude interlude party. The girls are still arguing, and they are still stressing the chef out. <laughs> every time every time the chef came out there to say what she was um, making, and, and, you know, it would be further and further into the arguments, she sounded more and more nervous. I said, poor thing. She didn't know she was up there for all that ghetto shit. Giselle, you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. Okay, and Mia says, wait a minute, hold on. You know, she's usually a good judge of character, and when she looks at Giselle, and just listen to her she think that she has a good heart and Giselle was like well damn it sign the girl up I like her already well you know what this is Mia's first time around the girls around Giselle and I was smitten with Giselle when I first met her too give her a few minutes because Giselle's dark side always shows up so I was just like oh what is this Mia's trying to make nice with Giselle aren't you supposed to be Karen's friend girl did they not tell you how it works on these shows Karen decides to take it all the way back to season two maybe even season one I know it was either season two or season one when Giselle was talking to Uncle Jessup and he told her that she's getting older you know and that she's gonna have to find somebody to love her um on the inside because the outside her looks will eventually go away and when he said that to her she said in her confessional that um uncle jessup will be dead it's six feet under the ground before these looks fade away all right and somehow karen has took that to mean that giselle was wishing death on her husband and you know i knew then when you were wishing death on my husband that that was the beginning of the end i said well you didn't rush to say anything about it it's fucking six seasons later and now you decide to call. I said, okay, Karen, you just coming up with some shit to say, huh? You was mad all this time about that and now you just decided to say something, girl, please. Giselle was like, girl, ain't nobody wish death on no damn Uncle Jessup. Wendy finally says, well, you know what? If there's a problem between just Giselle and Karen, then we need to not be in it. Don't let it be a gang up. You know, just let them two handle it. And Robert was like, it's not a gang up. And then Robert says, I don't even see why Wendy's protecting Karen because Karen gave her the blues last season. Okay, everybody's always talking about what the person did last season. So while Robin is talking to Karen, Karen was just like, well, Robin, let me ask you, when is the wedding? And Robin says, uh, soon when COVID is over. Why? When's yours? Mine is going to be soon too. And it's going to be a real wedding, you know, with a real relationship. And Robin was like, what you trying to say? Like, I got a fake relationship. So, you know, they was all like, oh, Karen. I said, yeah, like I said, Karen is just trying to grasp at straws at this point. You know, just ain't making no damn sense. Now, you now you saying that Juan and Robin, even though we, I don't think they get married no time soon either. And I'm sure Robin probably think they ain't getting married anytime soon either. But the point is, she and Juan are still together. Because Karen is just saying whatever and Wendy's trying to bring it back down. You know, she was just like, let's not forget the real reason why we're here, okay, for happiness. And then she stands up and she shows off her butt. And they were like, we knew you got your ass done. She was like, yes, but she wanted to tell everybody that she had her ass done. She didn't want people telling her. I couldn't understand what the secret was last week because it was like, girl, you, they gonna know as soon as you ain't gonna walk around in the road for the rest of your life. And plus, you already said you got your boobs done. Uh, Mia was like, oh, she had to wait until after I said what I had done. And then she felt comfortable enough to say what she had had done. Mia, we could look at you and tell you had a lot done. 
And speaking of Mia, we learn a little bit about her. We see her in her environment, her home environment. They live in a beautiful penthouse in Baltimore, overlooks the water. Okay, her and her husband, that's 38 years older or 32 years older than her. It looks like she's at least his fourth wife, maybe even further along, but they have three kids. She has one from a previous relationship, which is their oldest, and then their two younger kids. I think, what did she say? They were nine and five or something like that. Those two are by her husband. Um, and, you know, now that her husband has gotten older, he's kind of taken a step back from the businesses, the many businesses that they have. And she's the one that's kind of taken the leadership role in the businesses. So she's a boss bitch, y'all. And she's um, also making sure that she's there for her family, for her young kids. She's busy. The husband looks older, but he don't look old like Uncle Jessup old. He don't have the same. <laughs> did she say how long they have been married? I don't think that she did. So we see Karen at home. She's, you know, making up, cleaning up the room, her and Uncle Jessup, and then they finally sit down so she can tell him about what happened at the party. You know, Jessup, I am not all the way proud of the way that I acted at the party. I think that I might have come a little too hard. Maybe she shouldn't have called Giselle a whore from Hampton. I was like, you think? <laughs> So, yeah, she's feeling bad about what she did. She was like, you know, because when Giselle broke up from Jamal the first time in that divorce, she lost everything, you know? And then for her to get back together with him and for him to break her heart again, you know, she's going through some things. And she's taking it out on me when she should be taking it out on him. She's angry, is Karen's reasoning. No, Giselle just don't like you, Karen. And she feels like she can shade you whenever she feels like it. Because Giselle ain't thought she was in no damn relationship with Jamal. She was just trying to tell us that. So now Karen has this great idea that she is going to uh, have a party for the girls. Everybody be in, will be invited. You know, it's going to be a party about love. Oh, that would be good. And it's almost Valentine's Day, so that's perfect. Yes, it's perfect. And so she's going to have everybody come. They can bring their spouses. And she tells Uncle Jessup, as far as Candace, the relationship is strained, but it is not over. And Uncle Jessup was like, that's great because he don't want no shit. Let's not get into anything too crazy and not too messy. Oh, Jessup, you know, as long as I have your support, I'm good. You got my support, baby. I love you. And she loves him too. Now, jumping over to Candace, what's Candace doing with her life? Well, since she didn't go to the nude interlude, you know, she wasn't feeling good that day. Well, she's feeling better now, and she's back to her love that she's been doing recently, which is acting. Um, she's been in a couple of BT made for TV type movies and um, good for her. She said that that's the love. She wants to be taken seriously as an actress and all that. So that's what she's doing. Actually, we see her on set at the time. Um, and then she's also still working on her music. So she's also busy. Um, Chris, she calls Chris when she gets a break off set and um, he's like now her manager, I guess. So he's helping manage her career because remember they closed the restaurant so he ain't doing that anymore. And he's just doing the online chef school and all the other stuff. So he's also keeping track of her schedule. So he's telling her what she's got to do. Like I said, she's a busy girl now. Now later on in the show, she gets an invitation from Karen. Karen is going to be having a party. That's she's been invited to and she is not sure if she's going to go. She says that Karen won't acknowledge that her experience was real and I was just like oh we are gonna continue on with this I mean Monique ain't even on the fucking show no more you got what you wanted the person that you were fighting with you know is gone why are you still trying to keep this going I was just like oh she's gonna still be the victim you guys I'm not gonna be able to deal I swear I ain't gonna feel like talking about that shit all season now we see Ashley in her home. Um, her mother comes over to visit. And, um, you know, she's just telling us how her mom and Michael now have a better relationship, you know, now that Michael apologized to the whole family for messing around on Ashley countless times. Um, they're all in a good place now. The mom was like, is, is Michael going to stay home with you, you know, when you have the second baby? And she was like, he'll do some, he'll stay home for a little bit. But he, we're also decided that we're going to get a nanny. It ain't no cute, you know, young sexy nanny is it nope not this one okay just somebody that can help her get her shit done around there because she realizes that if she's trying to keep the spice up with her and michael that she's going to need some help okay then she gets in a very uncomfortable conversation i was like who talks about this shit with their mom i mean even though they're younger i mean i can 
I mean, I have had conversations with Jada that I never could have, you know, could have imagined that I would have had with my mom, but this is a little far, okay? She's saying how she still has the sexual desire with, um, you know, Michael to have sex. However, it's not comfortable, but that's okay because God gave her two, you know, more than one hole. And I was just like, girl, now see, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. I don't want to hear about your anal backdoor action with Michael. The whole visual in my mind is, just, that shit is not what I want to see. I mean, that's right up there with Mama D. Okay, Rashida and, and, and D-Lo in the bed. Now I got the visual of Ashley and Michael having anal sex. Oh my God. And then I was like, can you put this on the TV? I mean, this is just regular time. It ain't even after 10. They just say idiot kind of. And the mom was like, well, you know, everybody has to have their, um, you know, everybody needs to get their pleasures. And I was like, oh, I can't. I cannot. But she was getting a kick out of this whole anal play. It's fine that that's what you do. I just don't need to know about it. Thank you. Later on, as Ashley is on the phone talking to the placenta storage place that she's going to have her placenta, Karen comes over. She's listening to Ashley, you know, try to wrap up the conversation. And Karen was just like, I had two kids naturally and I was never introduced to my placenta. Can you imagine trying to get it and chew it and swallow it and everything? Ew. That placenta thing is all the, all the rage now. I know a lot of people are getting it done. Karen invites her to the party and Michael is welcome too. I don't want my and Giselle's issue with each other to divide the group. So everybody is going to be invited. Ashley was just like, yeah, you did kind of go kind of hard on the other day, you know, and you talking about her hot box and Sing Sing, you know, now the girls is all trying to figure out like, what does that mean? And you went to Sing Sing and where is Sing Sing? And well, you know, listen, I did a little research and I found out that Sing Sing was a jail and it really didn't go with anything. I just said it because I thought it sounded good with hot box. I was like, what? I told you guys that Karen was saying whatever the fuck. It was funny though, wasn't it? I think it was probably a joke that somebody wrote out for her and she fucked it up. Karen says, yeah, she's a funny person and she has a sense of humor. And I was like, Karen, cut it out. And while they're sitting there talking, little baby Dean is waking up in the other room. So Ashley goes out there to get him. And uh, when she comes back, she's like, now Dean is very discerning. He can tell when he likes a person right away. And as soon as he look at Karen, He's all starts crying. And it's always funny when babies start crying when you look at them. I ought to cry too if I was Dean because honey, Karen and that witchy poo eye makeup that she insisted on wearing and all that, it is not a good look. It, it is not. That shit was scare me too. So, you know, Dean was like, get this bitch away from me. <laughs> And Karen was just like, that's all right. I don't want to come. You don't need to come to me. I don't want you anyway. And Karen ends up leaving. Now we see Giselle, she finally finished her home. And from the outside, I couldn't even, I, you know, I was surprised. I was like, whose house is that? It was totally different, it looks nice. Um, Robin goes over there and Giselle is taking her around. I said, okay, Giselle, because we know all of Giselle's taste is in her mouth. So she definitely had somebody hire somebody to come in and do that shit right. Um, you know, and so she's got it decorated, you know, and it's not nothing overly done. It's a, it's a nice, comfortable home, okay? Um, uh, Robin said, I said, girl, you're going to get in trouble for this. Okay, the 10 demerits. She said that the interior was beautiful. She said the outside is horrible. She said because she's got this addition, you know, which was the West Wing, which I had noticed last week when they showed it. She's got this addition that's just thrown onto the side. It doesn't match. Whoever did that for her made no attempt to try to combine it and make sure that it all flowed together with the rest of the house. I mean, it got, it's like a regular siding um, building next to this brick or at least like it's cement or stucco or something home and you got this siding you know just like this oblong square piece that's stuck on the side that she calls her west wing so Robin was like oh it's horrible but anyway that's neither here nor there they go inside they sit down she starts up again on this stupid conversation about Jamal that I ain't gonna be giving y'all too much of my energy about you know, the fact that um, it's not working. And Robin was like, I didn't never think that Giselle and Jamal was all that, you know, hot and heavy anyway. And then COVID let them realize that they really could live without each other. So Robin just kind of plays it down to like, child, whatever. Oh, let's call Candace to see if she's okay. You know, since she didn't come to Wendy's party. So they call Candace 
And um, yeah, they give her the rundown real quick. Wendy got her boobs and her butt done. And Candace was like, what, really? Yes, girl, she got her boobs and her butt done. And you know, we had a new girl there. Her name is Mia. And within five minutes, Mia told us all of the work that she's had done. She's had her eyes done. She's had her cheeks done. She's had her chin done. She's had her lips done. She's had her neck done. She's had her boobs done. She's had her ass done. She's got her clit done. Candace was like, what? You know how it is when your girls is telling you the stories or whatever. She's laughing at it. And Karen called uh, Giselle's puss a hot box. Candace was like, shit, I see I missed a lot, didn't I? Giselle says that she can't with Karen. She ain't gonna be around Karen. She ain't gonna do nothing with Karen until Karen apologizes. That's always Giselle's number one thing every season. Somebody got to apologize to her ass. Because when she gets off the phone with Candace, she tells Robin that she ain't even gonna be worrying herself about uh, uh, Karen. You know, the fact that they ain't got no money. They still owe money, okay? They still broke. They still renting. She said Uncle Jessup will probably die before they ever own something. And um, Robin was like, oh, not that, not that. Okay, so I'm sure that that's going to piss Karen off too when she hears that. And then later on, we see Giselle eating with her girls. <laughs> You know, we love the girls. The girls is why we can tolerate Giselle because, honey, we know that at least in her household that she got somebody that's going to check her every single time. And the girls have gotten bigger, more um, outspoken, beautiful girls, right? Um, and now, actually, the oldest one is on the confessional with because you guys notice that this season they're letting the, you know, the spouse or the significant other, in this case, her child, um, also be on the confessional as well. She wants to talk to them about boys, who they can date. They was like, whoever we want. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yes, you can date whoever you want, but let's talk about the rappers, okay? The athletes. And they were like, what's wrong with date dating an athlete? She did it, you know, she did it back when she was younger and one of them blew his knee out and he was depressed. And they were like, so what's wrong with that? All you gotta do is be supportive of them and, uh, you know, uphold them and make sure that they're okay. But Giselle's trying to tell them that that ain't what they want. But they ain't paying her no attention. They was like, all your boyfriends are horrible. <laughs> And then they was like, and you don't know how to break up with them. They were like, and we glad you ain't with Jamal no more. You could finally cut that shit out because the girls already knew that it was some bullshit. I'm telling you, I love Giselle's girls. Now you guys, Wendy. Um, she's home and her sister and her mother come over. And um, so they hadn't seen her, I guess, since she's had her, her surgery. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. And actually, Wendy even mentioned it. The fact that the mom, okay, so the mom, you can already tell that the mom has, you know, Hollywood tendencies. Like, okay, she had her daughter. Her daughter was this successful teacher and uh, professor and, 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 and spokesperson on CNN, not spokesperson, corresponded on, um, you know, for the political um, subject. She loved the fact that her daughter was doing that. Okay, but I bet you she loves even more that her daughter is on Real Housewives of Potomac, okay? And who would have ever thought that the mama would be okay with her getting her boobs and her butt done? But the mama was like, I love it, okay? I got flapjacks. As a matter of fact, you guys can get my damn boobs done too, okay? I'll give you till December. They was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, you guys gonna pay for mama to get her boobs up. Some tell me that mama was dead serious too. Anyways, while she's sitting there talking to her mom and her sister, she's saying that, you know, she did what she did for all them years and it wasn't really fulfilling her. So, you know, she's gotten to this point in her life where she's ready to do what she really actually enjoys. And what would that be, you guys? Home essentials, you know, housewares. And um, she's starting off with candles. You know, she's been mixing the oils and mixing the scents and, you know, she really loves this. She lets them see a candle, just for example. Now, Eddie is sitting over there, got this look on his face like, Lord, my wife has decided that she's gonna make candles. <laughs> he ain't saying nothing, but that's a look that he got on his face. I was like, don't worry about it, Eddie. You guys got Real Housewives of Potomac money, okay? I'm sure Wendy got a few extra dollars in this next season. So um, that's probably more what you gonna rely on as an income, not these damn candles. And now, like I said, the mama's totally sold on that. She would've came with this shit before she got on Real Housewives of Potomac and said she was about to do some candles. I bet you that mama would've been singing a whole totally different tune. But like I said, no, it's Real Housewives of Potomac that we good with. And all this other little shit you do on the side is just what you do on the side. Now, Karen's party. Okay, we see her walking through the house like, you know, Uncle Jessup, where are you at? I'm in here cooking in the kitchen. They get a taste of one of the bourbon drinks that they're going to have there. Now, this is a love party. 
I know that Giselle ain't got no man, and she may not want to come. Even if she doesn't come, I want Robin to still feel welcome. Yeah, but we see Robin talking to Juan about it, and Juan was like, yeah, I'm not going to that. All right. And it don't look like Robin has plans of coming either. So the first people to get there is Mia and her husband. When she walks in, you know, she kind of walks ahead of everybody else. As Uncle Jessup sees and was just like, who is this woman in my house? And she was just like, my name is Mia. You know, goes and gives him a hug and everything. Okay. Introduces her husband. So they're the first ones to get there. Karen says to um, her husband, do you play golf? And she was just like, oh, when I met him after he broke up from his third wife, he played golf. Okay, so that's why I said I think she might be the fourth wife. Next, we have Wendy and Eddie. They get there. Like I said, Robin has declined. She and Juan will not be there. We know that Giselle is not going to be there. But Candace is coming, and I'm so happy about that. Ashley gets there. She doesn't have any Michael with her. You know, she says that Michael is home with the baby. So once we get the people there, I'm so happy that everybody came to my home. This is the reset. The people that you need to be resetting with ain't even there. Well, I mean, I guess it would be Can uh, Candace. And Candace tells us that the only reason why she came is was this was her proving to herself that she has gotten over things, that she has mo is moving forward, is trying to heal. Okay, but she still isn't sure. I was so distracted by this fucking um, uh, makeup that she had. Who told her to put the damn McDonald's yellow uh, stripe right here and right here? She looked like she was, had fucking war paint on her. She looked a goddamn mess. Why do you guys guys let these people get up here looking like this that was so not cute she looked like the the warriors from black panther the one that protect the king when karen goes to you know greet her at the door you know karen gave her a hug and was just like you know today we're just going to talk about love but i would like for us to get together next week with some coffee or tea and maybe they can sit down and talk then so candace was like okay because this is not the environment that we need to be trying to talk and get serious and be fighting and everything so that's what we settle on. So Candace comes in, greets everybody, cordial to Ashley, you know, sees Ashley there with her big belly. Don't get up, you know, gives Wendy and Ed Eddie a hug and, inter you know, Mia gets up and gives her a hug right away, introduces herself. Okay, so the gang's all here. Candace was like, so I heard that there was a, you know, I miss Wendy's party. There was a scuffle among the sta saints. Oh, you know, we're not talking about the issues between me and Giselle. This is about love. Okay, Mia was like, she did defend Giselle, but now, you know, she's not too sure because if somebody can wish death on somebody's husband, and Candace was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody wished death on someone's husband? And I said, oh, I guess Karen must have talked to Mia about that su support of Giselle. Okay, because you still didn't seem like you was all that upset with Giselle, even after that came out, like Wendy pointed out. You still got the phone number from Giselle when it was time to leave. So you didn't have a problem with her then. And she was just like, no, I was just trying to, you know, lighten the mood around there, which is something that you should have done since it was your house. Okay, so Mia already knows that Wendy, bitch, you ain't even gonna have time to come for me. Wendy was trying to say that she was flip floppy and that, you know, she was Giselle's friend, Karen's friend, you know, now she's not Karen's friend. Like, what's up with that? And honey, Mia was like, you know what? I am done talking with you. And she just like flips her off. And Wendy was just looking like, what? I said, Wendy, you got to regroup, honey. This one is quick. This one is a quick-witted one. She's like, first of all, what you're not going to do is going to come for me, okay? And don't put your hands up. And, we, and Mia was like, I put my hands up if I fucking want to. What would you going to do? I said, ooh, fighting words. <laughs> and all the girls was like laughing like, oh my God, this girl is new. Is she doing all of this? You know, they was like, yeah, the hands don't always do well in this group. It's going to be the Wendy and Mia fight sometime, at the, you know, in this in this season. But anyway, Karen says that she wants them to play this game as couples. So it's going to be a form. Well, actually, it's going to be just like the newlywed game. You know, you answer the questions the way you think that your spouse is going to answer and that they should be matching. So, you know, and, and, and of course, the questions is like, what's your favorite, sex, favorite, favorite sexual positions? Candace and Chris get this right. Candace and Chris both say but with her on top. Wendy and Eddie say doggy style. Uh, Karen and Uncle Jessup, well, Karen says all of them. And Uncle Jessup was like uh, Karen on top because Uncle Jessup ain't got time to be pumping. You just sit there and do what you need to do. <laughs> Mia and her husband say missionary, okay? And so the questions go on like that. One of the questions was like, what woman would you be attracted to in this group? Okay, and I was like, I don't know about that, you know? But okay, it's all in fun. Uncle Jessup says Katie. <laughs> takes the safe route out. Katie ain't even there. Mia's husband actually says, Karen, I said, oh, you like the old witchy poo look. Okay, I guess he was like, if I had to get with an older broad, that would be the one. <laughs> 
<laughs> even though he don't look like he do older. But don't get me wrong, Karen does look great, okay? It's just her makeup is killing me this season so far. Chris says Evelyn, which um, Candace knew he was gonna say that because he just loves him some Evelyn. And Eddie doesn't say anybody. He says not applicable, okay? He knows better. Um, and they go on and on, you know, where they've had sex. Uh, me and her husband said Waffle House ba bathroom. Wendy and Eddie said at the park. One of the questions was like, where did they meet? And everybody is saying what they, where they met. And uh, Mia and her husband said they met at the strip clubs. Evidently, she was a bartender. And they was like, yeah, we don't believe that bartender story. All right. They think maybe she was a stripper. Uh, whichever way it went, she got her man. Got two kids off the deal in a nice penthouse in Baltimore. So <clears throat> I guess me is doing okay. <laughs> but anyway, the love party was a huge success. We got through it without too many um, fights. You know, the fights were all very low key and we didn't have any problems. But like I said, Candace ain't trying to fight right now. And everybody else is low key. We needed Giselle to be there to really get the shit started. So... That's why the day went well. All right, rock stars, that's it. Let me get off of here. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, rock stars, bye.